Have you recently suffered from acid indigestion, heartburn, or some other related ailment? Perhaps you've turned to an over-the-counter remedy such as an antacid tablet to combat these symptoms. But which one do you choose? One claims to absorb 50 times its weight in excess acid. Another suggests that its name be synonymous with the word relief. It's clear that there are many antacid tablets out there. What's not so clear is which one is most effective in helping you with your indigestion. Hello, I'm Alan Schick, and today I'm going to introduce you to the chemistry laboratory experiment analysis of antacids. Your stomach normally contains 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid solution. This is commonly referred to as stomach acid. Indigestion and heartburn can be caused by an excess amount of this acid in your stomach. An antacid's job is to neutralize some of this acid, thereby bringing the concentration back to its normal level. To begin the introduction to today's laboratory, we'll take a check of the equipment used. We're going to be grinding a tablet of antacid, and so we're going to need a mortar and pestle. And we're going to weigh a little bit of that, so we're going to need a balance. We're going to dissolve that into a solution, so we'll need some flasks and a stirring rod to facilitate the mixing. And we're going to heat that to get rid of any excess carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide in solution will change the acid reading and therefore affect our results. In order to heat this, we'll need a ring stand assembly with a Bunsen burner, tongs, cooling pad, things you've seen before. And then we're going to do a titration uh, to analyze the solution after the heating. And to do that, we'll be using a burette. So to begin today's experiment, we have assigned to us an antacid tablet. First thing we need to do with this tablet is get a weight of the whole tablet. And so we'll place it on a balance, as we have done many times and record the mass on the report sheet about 75% of the way down the report sheet there will be a place for the mass of the whole tablet. We then need to grind the tablet so we'll put it in a mortar and tap on it a little bit with a pestle to get it kind of broken up and finally give it the circular grinding motion and so we grind this until it becomes a nice powder. Now we need about half of this tablet for the analysis, but no more than 0.5 grams. So we're going to start by taking a flask and weighing the flask. So we're going to write this weight down on the report sheet. And then we're going to take about half the tablet, but like I said, no more than 0.5 grams. So you may want to watch the scale as you do this. And so we have a new mass here, and we will write that down on the report sheet as well. And the difference between that and the previous reading is going to be the amount of the antacid substance that we have in here. Now, we're going to add to this 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid. What we need to do next is get roughly 50 milliliters of 0.1 molar hydrochloric acid solution. Uh, in our sample. And in order to do this, uh, we need to do this very precisely. So we use what we know, what we refer to as a autofill burette. It's like a burette, like you've used with titrations before, but it's got a very unique feature in that it has an autofill mechanism so that we can actually fill the burette up to exactly zero. So we only have to take one reading. In order to do this, the stopcock on an autofill burette has three positions instead of two. Normally you have an off and an on position. In this case, we have an off, a fill, and a drain position. So if we set the indicator up, the auto, uh, the auto burette fills to the exact top and stops exactly at zero. There's an overflow mechanism so that anything that goes beyond that will get drained off into another reservoir. We can then, knowing that we're starting at a reading of exactly zero, we can then drain by setting the stopcock the other direction, we can then drain exactly a proportion into our flask. In order to do this, you want about 45 or 50 milliliters of solution. The idea here is that we're adding a specific amount that we know of the hydrochloric acid. Since we don't know how much base there is in the antacid, 
we're going to be able to determine that by finding out how much hydrochloric acid is actually left after the neutralization. So we're getting close here. I'm going to get down and uh, find out how much we've got to go. We've now delivered a specific amount of hydrochloric acid solution to our flask. We need to write down precisely what that volume is. So make sure that you read the burette reading down here. Remember, it started exactly at zero, so you don't have to do any subtractions. Just read the reading, put it on the report sheet, and also note that you need to record the concentration of the hydrochloric acid solution, which will be posted near the autofill burette. If you have any questions or forget any of these instructions, there will, in fact, be an instruction sheet, much like this one, posted near the autofill burette in the laboratory. Having just retrieved our hydrochloric acid solution, we now need to make sure that we can dissolve as much of the tablet as we can. Uh, in order to do this, you can swirl it around or use a stirring rod to facilitate things, if you wish. Uh, in any case, not all the material will dissolve because there are some insoluble binders put into the tablet that kind of hold the tablet together but don't dissolve in the solution. So don't worry too much about the cloudy nature of the solution. Before we proceed any further, we need to add an indicator, phenolphthalein. This will, be, uh, this will be in the hood, located in the hood at the back of the lab. You need three drops, one, two, three. And what the, this is designed to do is to turn colors when all of the excess acid that's in our jar has been used up during the titration. Right now, we see there should be no color change, and in fact, there isn't. If it turns pink, it means that not enough acid was added to the antacid material, and you need to start again using a smaller amount of antacid material. That it is clear is good, and we can continue on. We need to uh, heat this to drive off any of the excess carbon dioxide that's in it, and so in order to do this, we will be using a Bunsen burner and the ring stand assembly, and you've all been introduced to Bunsen burners before. So I will go ahead and light this. You want a hot, non-luminous flame. We'll just set this under the flask for a moment and bring it to boiling. And it needs to boil for about a minute once it gets started. While it's heating, in the meantime, you should feel free to start a second uh, sample by grabbing another flask and putting some more of the antacid material in. Remember to weigh the flask and then the antacid material and go through the same motions we did with the autofill burette. Well, our solution has been boiling about a minute now, so it's time to take it off and let it cool. So we'll place it over on the cooling pad and then we'll go ahead and turn off the gas until the next sample comes through. Now the solution needs to cool, but not necessarily completely to room temperature. Um, as long as it's e easily handled by the hand, that's cool enough. So we'll go ahead and let that cool for a while. While our solution is cooling, we can prepare ourselves for the titration. First thing is to get some sodium hydroxide solution from the back of the lab. Note that there's a particular concentration. You probably need to write that down. specific amount that you get is not important. First thing we're going to do is bring it back to the workstation and rinse out the burette a few times with a couple of small portions of sodium hydroxide. Only a milliliter or two is enough. Take a little bit, roll it around, and then roll it into a sink, continuing to roll. And we'll repeat that. And then we can fill it up the whole way. Now, generally speaking, you want to be careful. You don't want to overflow, but you can fill it pretty close to the top, above the zero line. And once it's above the zero line, over a sink, you can open it and drain the level to just below zero. If 
the specific level is not important as long as it is below zero. So bring this back over to the burette clamp, clamp it into place, and we're ready for the titration. We need to take a, an initial reading so we can bend over, get a good reading on this, and write that down as the initial burette reading. Checking our solution here, we see that it has cooled down reasonably well. It's still a little bit warm to the touch, but that shouldn't matter. So we're going to go ahead and begin the titration by placing it under, under the burette and opening the burette and swirling at the same time. So we're going to open it up and let it go. At first, you can add the sodium hydroxide quickly. But as you begin to see a pink color emerge, you want to start slowing it down. Now, if you're not sure if it's pink, you can always use a piece of white paper. A piece of white paper underneath will sometimes make it a little easier to see. In fact, it appears as though it may be pink. I'm going to add another drop just to make sure. I'm going to go, and definitely it has turned a very pale pink. If you overshoot the endpoint, the pink will be very bright and you've probably added too much. But what we have here is a fairly decent endpoint with a nice pale pink color. And we'll let it sit here for a minute, and if the pink color persists, we have definitely reached the endpoint. The pink color is persisting, so the titration is finished. We end by taking a specific reading of the final volume in the burette, and therefore the volume of sodium hydroxide that was used to titrate the remaining HCl acid in the solution is the difference between the final reading and the initial reading that you took before you started. The calculations are performed in a fairly straightforward manner. Uh, we know exactly how much acid we added to the antacid tablet, and the antacid did neutralize some of that. The amount that it did not neutralize, we just finished neutralizing using the sodium hydroxide. So the difference then between what we put in and what we just neutralized is the amount that's neutralized by the antacid. The specific calculations are outlined in the lab manual, and I won't uh, belabor them here. You need to accomplish this entire procedure at least once more using another sample. And if the titration calculations come out to be the same within 5% relative average deviation, then you may proceed uh, to the finish part. Otherwise, you need to go back and repeat it a third time. When you can find two titrations that give you the answers to be within 5% relative average deviation, then you may take those numbers to the lab instructor who will give you data on another antacid product so that you can compare the one that you just measured and the one that he gave you data for. In summary, we have taken a known amount of antacid tablet to which we have added a specific and known amount of hydrochloric acid. We added the acid in excess, which is to say that the antacid neutralized some of the hydrochloric acid that we added, but not all of it. We then went to a titration to find out exactly how much of the HCl was left after the antacid has done its neutralization. So the amount of acid that had been neutralized by the antacid is simply the difference between the amount that we put in and the amount that was titrated. The specific equations for this are shown in your lab manual, and you may treat them as you will. At the end of the experiment, then, you just need to clean up your station and make sure you rinse out the burette completely and rinse it out a few times with distilled water. And once you are all cleaned up, you can hand in your report sheet and be on your way. I thank you for your attention, and I'll see you in the laboratory.